happy to be here I'm honored this is cool I've never done an Instagram live and I'm a grandma so I'm like I hope I can get on here <laughs> so I'm glad it worked me too I'm so excited to hear everything your whole heart but I just have to keep shouting you out you're just incredible and you you've carried so much history with God and it's it's been really awesome to see your walk with the Lord over the years, because I've known you for years, which is crazy. Um, just seeing your walk with the Lord over the years and how you have like really embodied that simple obedience, like in every, every aspect of your life. <laughs> like you really have like given your weak yes, your strong yes. Like you just, you just modeled to me and to so many other women like what it looks like to simply say yes to Jesus and follow him so Aww. I just love you well I love you too and I'm honored to be here and I'm so proud of you I think you are just amazing but you already know that because <laughs> I tell you that when I see you but I'm just so honored to be here and you know just as a young woman like trying to follow the voice of God in my own life you know yeah. you know the story for me I grew up a pastor's kid but it wasn't till I was 15. I mean, I always loved God, but it wasn't till I was 15 that God really marked me. You know, mm -hmm. I'd struggled with an eating disorder, with depression. Mm -hmm. 10th grade was a tough year. High school's tough, you know, for everybody. <laughs> and um, long story short, I really found God in that season for myself, mm -hmm. you know. And I just remember sitting at, we had this old upright piano in our living room. I was so depressed. I was so insecure. Mm -hmm. And there was only one place that I could go to find healing, to find relief, to find mm -hmm. joy. And I didn't realize it then, but it was the presence of God that literally carried me through that season. It was mm -hmm. his presence. And I remember one day specifically sitting at the piano and it was the first song I ever wrote. I'm going to spare everybody on this live. And I'm not going to sing you that song because <laughs> it's not great. But, you know, the Holy Spirit is so kind and he moved on it. Mm -hmm. And I literally felt the tangible presence of God mm -hmm. meet me alone in my living room. I'd only like sing and play the piano when everyone was gone because I was so shy. And um, it was like God wrapped me in a warm blanket. That's the only way I can describe it. And that day I was ruined. You know what I mean? Like once yeah. you've experienced the tangible presence of God like that in such a real way, mm -hmm. it's like you, you don't settle for anything less. You just want it more and more and more. And so his presence was my deliverance, you know, mm -hmm. in my life. Um, but when I was praying today, just about what God wanted to say I kept going back to the conversation you and I had mm -hmm. when you were here just a couple weeks ago yeah you no know? and I know this has been such a challenging year for so many people really the last two years yeah. some people are coming through it some people are still in the funk <laughs> you know honestly I think we're all just trying to find our way yeah but I remember like coming out of 2020 like God can I even do ministry anymore like am yeah. I even anointed like I don't know yeah and I think people <laughs> felt that way and like forget ministry forget all the other stuff I think a lot of people were just kind of in a cloud yeah. and um, I remember at the beginning of the year just being like God like what is this like I feel all this doubt all this anxiety and I'm like I thought you delivered me from this when I was 15 yeah you know like <laughs> where is all this coming from and I feel like there's almost like this is gonna this is not really biblical but it's like a spirit of stress yeah it's like even when people don't have anything to be stressed about they're stressed they're yes. anxious, they're overwhelmed and I, I was feeling all that. And I'm like, God, what is this? Like, you got to show me. Yeah. And at the beginning of the year, God spoke to me and he said, he spoke to every, so at the beginning of every year, I always seek God for like a word and mm -hmm. I carry that word with me. And the word that he gave me this year was yield. Mm -hmm. And I felt like God wanted me to surrender, you know, Romans 12. And I yeah. felt like God said, just build me an altar and keep the fire burning. You know, lay down everything, like all, 
all the, the ways that you thought your life should go, all the preconceived ideas that you had for yourself. I just want you to lay it all down. Yeah. Which in the moment I was like crying and I was like, yes, Lord. But you know, when life keeps going, you're like, let me just pick that up off the altar. Yeah. You know, let me just throw that back in my purse. <laughs> and God is just constantly like, no, like you got to lay that back down. And so, you know, this year I've just been challenged to just live in a state of surrenderedness to God. So, but anyways, back to the anxiousness, I said, okay, God, you got to help me with this. I know you want me to walk in surrender, but where is all this anxiousness coming from? How do I overcome this? And I love to read books, but I had taken a break from reading so many books because I wanted to make sure I was reading the Bible. I think books are great, mm -hmm. um, but the word is really good too. So yeah. it's good to stay in that. But um, I just happened upon this book called The Nature of God by Graham Cook. And I don't know mm -hmm. if anyone on here has ever heard of Graham Cook, but he's amazing. You should check him out. Yeah. But um, anyways... As soon as I started reading it, I just knew like, okay, this is a rhema word for my life. You mm -hmm. know how that happens. It just leads us to something that, you know, is going to impact us. And um, so he started talking about how, like, when you enter into a season of life where you experience some sort of change in your life, it can be ministry. It can be that your role has shifted in ministry. Maybe you have greater influence, greater authority. You're functioning in a different way. Maybe you have a baby. You know what I mean? Maybe mm -hmm. you, you've, yeah. some, there's been a life change. Maybe you got married. Maybe anytime there's a change in your life, if you don't first like get before the Lord and seek him in stillness, it's so easy to get burned out. Like he was talking yeah. about like in the life of Moses, right? Moses mm -hmm. encountered God in the burning bush mm -hmm. and God spoke to him there. There was an upgrade in his image of God and there was an upgrade in his relationship with God. Yeah. And it's interesting to note that our image of God impacts the people around us, just like Moses's image of God impacted yeah. the entire nation. It's important that we see God rightly. We don't see him through the lens of our circumstances, but we see him like for who he actually is. Yeah. And so that just hit my heart because I'm, I'm looking at the life of Moses. Okay, he encountered God in the burning bush. There was an upgrade him in his image of God and in his relationship with God. Then he encountered him at the Temple Mount. And then again, <laughs> the cleft of the rock, right? So Moses <laughs> went from being a deliverer to being someone who brought people in. Hmm. And each time there was an upgrade in his image and relationship with God, he needed that upgrade for what yeah. God was calling him to do. And so I just felt challenged to get before the Lord in stillness. And two, I learned that, you know, what my dreams, my aspirations more important to me than who God wants to be for me. And so in that yeah. upgrading of my relationship with God, my image of God, I started asking God, God, who do you want to be for me in this season? Mm -hmm. And I felt like the mm -hmm. Lord spoke to me and he said, Proverbs eighteen ten, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs to it and is safe. And I've never, mm -hmm. you know, been like, Oh, strong tower. You know, it's not something that has ever <laughs> stuck out to me, you know, in yeah. the Bible. <laughs> but God is my strong tower. And it's like that's specific to me, but I feel like God is inviting us all to come into stillness, to sit before the Lord and say, God, who do you want to be for me in this season? Yeah. Because who he wants to be for you is exactly what you need. Yeah. And so God just began to speak to me that he wants to be my strong tower. You know, I think about the scriptures in Psalm where David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, I run to the towering rock of safety. Mm. When you think of a strong tower, what's a strong tower? It's the place that when a city was under attack, people would go and they would run to the top of that tower because nobody, because the enemy couldn't reach them there. Yeah. And it's the same with our relationship with God, those who dwell in the secret place of the most high. You know, Jesus gave us access to come all the way up 
Mm. And when we are under the shadow of the Most High, the enemy can't reach us. Mm. He has no, he, he can't, he can't enter that place. He hasn't been given access. Yeah. And so, you know, I just felt like for those who are watching today, that this is an invitation just for freedom, freedom from anxiety. If there's people listening, maybe you've been under a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. Yeah. Maybe there's people on here who have battled suicidal thoughts. Yeah. I just want to call that out, that that is a lie from the pit. And um, yes. I really just believe that that God wants to deliver people from anxiety. But I think more than ever before, it is so important that we abide in Christ. Yeah. That we are stay close to the flame. That we are that we are taking time. I believe rest is a weapon in the, in the kingdom. Yeah. I really do. We work so hard, but I think stillness is so necessary cuz yeah. we don't just live for God, we live from him. Mm. You know? And yeah. being st being still and being in a place of rest doesn't necessarily always mean we're not moving but it's that we live from a place of stillness and rest in god that mm -hmm. in every season we can have peace and another thing that the lord was showing me was how you know in life we go through seasons of hiddenness and we go through seasons of manifestation i think we talked mm -hmm. about this a little bit yeah you know where there are seasons where god is just like he is so tangible. He's so there. It's like everywhere you turn, you feel the presence of God and you sense him there. Mm -hmm. And then we go through seasons where it's like, well, God, where'd you go? Like, yeah. <laughs> are you still here? Yeah. And, you know, God was showing me how this is how we walk in peace, right? That even in seasons of hiddenness, I feel like that's an invitation from God to now activate our faith and to yeah. trust the word of God. That, okay, even though I don't feel the manifest presence of God and I don't have the chills and I don't have the, yeah. you know, this is an opportunity for my inner man to be strengthened. That I can walk in peace and not be anxious in every season of life. Because now I trust the word of God. I trust that he is who he says he is. And I think in those seasons, even of hiddenness, our inner self, our inner man grows strong because yeah. we learn to lean on not just feelings because feelings are fleeting, but on the truth of God's word and who he is. And I think just these few things have been so vital to me, like coming out of this season of anxiety and recognizing, okay, so I need an upgrade in my image of God and my relationship with God. I need to seek God and ask him, who do you want to be for me? Because I'm obviously going to need it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and then just learning to walk in peace and seasons of manifestation and then seasons where, you know, it seems like God is hidden, but everything God does, it's always for our good, you know, yeah. always to strengthen us. So, um, but that was really something that the Lord put on my heart for today. And wow. Again, just like for anyone who's listening on here, maybe you're watching this later, or you're watching it now, just, you know, I just pray that this is a season of refreshing for you, a season of getting still before the Lord, you know, and seeking his presence and that anxiety has to bow to the name of Jesus. Fear yes. has to bow to the name of Jesus, that God wants you to walk in peace. Yes. You know, he doesn't want you to walk in anxiousness. Um, I wrote this down. It says, we didn't learn to pray out of anxious anxiousness from God. We learned that from the world as if mm -hmm. anxiousness makes it makes you a more caring and concerned person. It doesn't, it just makes you a stressed one. We mm -hmm. can better pray the will of God immersed in the peace of God. And this peace has nothing to do with external circumstances. Yeah. We were not made to live anxious and fearful and without peace yeah and that doesn't make us a more concerned person or better person we were made to pray from peace live from peace and so i just speak the peace of god over yeah. every person in this life yeah oh courtney there's so much gold 
it's like <laughs> coming out of you <laughs> oh it's so good just everything you're saying like obviously we all know 2020 was filled with so much fear and anxiety everywhere you turned that was the narrative that was all you heard but yeah. it's crazy how like that was always already in us like that fear and anxiety like all it took was for there to be some shaking and yeah all of a sudden we're like oh, like what's the world gonna turn to exactly and I just feel like what you just said where you were saying that peace isn't about your circumstances yeah. like that I think that is where I don't know where it came from but like that's something I feel like followers of Jesus um we kind of get twisted of thinking like okay if God wants to give me peace and God wants to give me rest then how come everything around me is like swirling and shaking and nothing's working out and nothing's yeah. going my way um but it's that what you were saying developing that right view of god in the secret place that when the world's shaking around you you're gonna have like this almost like inner inner secret place that even like in a crowded room you can like turn <laughs> Yeah. to like your inner man the spirit within you like the holy spirit within you and really like find that peace and that comfort and that rest no matter what's happening right and that's so crazy and so challenging because we're so used to like just you know we're being like led by our feelings and led by yeah. what's happening around us so everything you're saying is so and, you know, cool it makes me think of um, the scripture, I think it's in Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on yeah. your own understanding. And I think part of having peace is realizing we don't have to think our way through everything. Hmm. You know, like, this is the beauty of God, that I can have things swirling around me, right? But I can have peace that anchors me because the Prince of Peace is crowned king of my heart. Yeah. It's not based on circumstances at all, because the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. We will never be able to figure everything out. No. It's just not going to happen. We feel like once I can think through this thing, I'm going to have peace. Like once yeah. I can figure it out. But I think it's just that place of like walking in surrender. And honestly, only in surrender can you really find real serenity honestly yeah and only in relinquishing like control can you find real contentment true like it's so true like one of the psalms that i lived in in 2020 was psalm 31 131 hmm. i think it's a psalm of david i can't remember but it's something along the lines of um my soul is content before you like a weaned hmm. child Hmm. And, you know, a wean child is someone who doesn't fuss or whimper or cry yeah. anymore for food, right? Because that child has been weaned and that child knows that their mother is going to give them exactly what they need. They don't have to beg for it. They don't yeah. have to fuss for it. And so just living that way before God, you know, being content in the Lord, knowing, trusting that in his timing, He's going to bring forth those things in your life. He's going to lead. He's going to lead and guide you. God doesn't usually give us the full map. He just gives <laughs> us the next turn signal. Yeah. And that's frustrating for us people. So we love to be in control. We want yes. to make it happen. We're like, let me figure this out. <laughs> and God's like, no, do you trust me? I've only, I just need one yes at the time. Yeah. You know, and it's, not leaning on our own understanding it's not being willing to not be in control and being and trusting that god is good and like his intent towards us is good and we can be at peace knowing that and so all we have to give god is our yes mm -hmm. you know and trust him with the rest bars just kidding <laughs> but Oh, this is so, so yeah. good, Courtney. I feel like this is so timely for me. This is timely, I'm sure, for so many other people on here, like just needing to be reminded of who God is. And like, even when I visited in Florida, that was the thing that I left with um, coming back 
home to Texas that I think honestly like really like wrecked me was seeing how many wrong perspectives and wrong like characteristics I've placed on God and so yeah. in the trusting in giving your weak simple yes there was always like a like with me there was always like a reserve of like okay but if I give you this or if like I surrender and I yield and I give you my yes like what are you gonna do <laughs> like what's your right. motive like exactly thinking, that God had motives like that he yeah. didn't truly have like my best in mind but afterwards like um just having you know this encounter with seeing the father and how he viewed yeah. me and all that stuff it changed everything and I left feeling so much more at rest in my soul knowing like he's good he's got yeah. this and if he can if he can handle the entire universe and the galaxies and if everything in the spiritual realm he can handle my little life my little so true. life you know so oh, yeah so good yeah. would you just pray all this out would you just pray for us Absolutely. and pray this out <laughs> yes i will father god we just love you today we thank you for your presence that yes. is always with us in every circumstance in every situation and god right now i just pray over every person in this live god all those who are going to watch this um, conversation that Bailey and I have had. Yeah. God, and I just speak peace over their heart, peace over their mind. I come against all anxiety in the mighty name of Jesus, all fear, all discouraging thoughts, Lord God, that have tormented them. God, I just speak the peace of God. I speak freedom. I speak deliverance over them in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I pray that their heart would be content before you, Lord God, that this would be a season of surrendering to you, of laying everything down, Lord God, that they would be reminded of how much you love them and that God, your best for us is so much better than our best. Yeah. So I pray, Lord God, that they would just be reassured that you are going to do your best for them. God, I even pray for those, God, who have been struggling sleeping at night. God, they've been so overwhelmed. Yeah. God, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for deliverance. I pray, God, that tonight they would have the best sleep that they've had in weeks. Yeah. Father God, teach us how to walk in surrender. God, teach us how to walk in peace like Jesus did, who in the midst of a storm, he could sleep on that boat because he knew that his father was in control and that his father was keeping watch over him. God, teach us to walk like that in this season. God, I thank you, God, for the purposes and the plans, God, that you have for each one listening. Lord God, I pray that they would be encouraged today. May your presence go with them. Bless everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, Courtney, I just love you so much. I just, I, I was listening in the car before I even got here. Uh, shameless plug to her music. <laughs> she has music, guys, that I'm her number one fan. Um, <laughs> but I was listening to that song you wrote still because I really needed it today. Just all the stress, all the stuff of life and I was listening to it still and I realized like that's that's something that like you have so much authority in like God's just given you this like anointing of rest and like you you carry that so go look up still by Cory <laughs> Rayleigh guys and listen to it and soak to it it's the best ever but Aww. yeah I just want to thank you for being obedient and even like thank you for being vulnerable and just your obedience with like everything you walked through you walked through so much that people would not know looking at you so they're like Courtney she's anointed she's amazing but man you have a story <laughs> like you have history and a story and it's just beautiful so I'm really thankful you were here and you prayed you're just amazing <laughs> oh I love you thank you for having me I love you so much. Guys, go follow her. Remember, listen to Still by Courtney Bailey. <laughs> love you and or love you guys and love you, Courtney. This was the best. I needed yeah. this. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.